everyone and welcome to my video. I'm Karas. I draw, paint and create and today we will be talking about the lazy and spoiled way to draw a good base for a watercolor painting. Then we'll go through my inability to paint flat colors and finally we'll see how to make it seem like you did a lot of work on a painting when in reality you cheated like a cheating cheater and it ended up looking like you know what you're doing. So if you enjoy artsy stuff and self-deprecating humor, stick around until the end. Now for what you'll need, hands, preferably clean, then an eraser, pencils of whatever type you like, a pencil sharpener to sharpen set pencils in case you plan to draw like a lot, brushes, watercolors, paper tissue and a watercolor paper. For this one, I mix the colors off screen as the exact shades matter less in this video. What does matter is the process behind choosing the colors. Keep watching, we'll talk about colors in a bit. Moving on to the drawing. Back in 2000 something, I had one of the most productive months of my life. I had a brand new sketchbook and discovered Pinterest for the first time. So obviously the universe was telling me to draw all day, every day. I look back now and I realize that I could afford to lay about all day just drawing whatever. If I could do that now, I would be so happy. I went ahead and did some sketches in my sketchbook and I ended up liking a bunch of them. If you're extremely comfortable with being a lazy bum and would rather take a hundred turns than draw something all over again, oh boy do I have good news for you. So what I did was take a picture of my sketches, then went into Photoshop and combined the two sketches I liked most, then I printed a scaled version of it, then I started adding some more details and making sure I don't have tangent lines. While working on this painting, I listened to the soundtrack for Into the Spider-Verse, which is one of the absolute best animated movies I've ever had the pleasure of watching and then re-watching again and again. If you want to have nice evocative illustrations, don't do what I do. Instead, you might want to listen to music that, that actually suits the subject of your drawing, because let me tell you, mumble rap and trap and pop go as well with this medieval Scottish princess, like socks go with wet floors. What music do you like to listen to while painting? Let me know in the comments and subscribe while you're there. Finally, using my light table, I traced the final drawing in my on the watercolor paper. More details about the light table in the description, I, I'll leave a link there. The one redeemable aspect of this whole labyrinth of a workaround is that you don't have to use the eraser and dust. You keep the paper intact as overworking it damages the surface of the paper and then it doesn't hold as much color and then what do you do? And you can make sure that you place the subject on the exact spot you want, which is also a win. And this was the moment my camera was so done with everything and it decided it needed a change of scenery. I used the masking liquid mainly to protect the string of the bow, but you can simply add it later with some white gel pen or gouache or whatever. I just like, no, I love the satisfaction of erasing that rubbery film at the end, it's very satisfying. Now for the colors. References are the heart and soul of good colors and my best friends when it comes to art. If you use references as often as you can, a lot of the studied material sticks in your memory and you'll be able to use it later on your own. For very accurate results, mix all of your colors beforehand. Here's an example in this short video of me explaining colors to my husband. So, when I paint a single character, I like to pick two or three main colors, in this case a bluish green, a red and a skin tone. The main principle I use is this, warm colors for lighter areas and cold colors for shaded areas and with that in mind, I obtained these colors you can see here. Easy enough, right? With the color wheel in mind, imagine you're simply sliding from the main colors to their warmer or colder neighbors. In traditional art, if you want a lighter color, don't just add white. It doesn't like to be alone. The simplest way to do this is to add light yellows or oranges and a dash of white, sure. I find that the final effect is much more vibrant. For the shadows, I use the blue and the purple, alternating between them to achieve a bit of a depth effect. For the areas that are farthest from the viewer, I use the blue, while for the areas that are closer to the light source, I use the purple. 
The final result is exaggerated, of course. You won't see shadows exactly like that in reality. Plus, I'm an artist, I do what I want. Here's an example of the same illustration, but the colors are flat. Meaning, I only used those three main colors without varying the hues for the light and shadow. While it still looks okay, I find it lacks the fun and playfulness of the original painting. I guess it's all up to you and the effect you want to achieve. Don't let me tell you which way is the correct way. For the technique, there isn't much to say. I just used plenty of water, blending colors on the palette and then letting them mix on paper. Brushes of different sizes help a lot too, using different pressures and tilt to achieve different results. I wish there was someone to teach me how to use brushes, but at least in my case, experimenting and practicing is the best way to find how you like to do things. It's the main reason why I can't explain what I do in this area, because there isn't a textbook recipe that I can just transfer to you, no matter how much I wish there was. The best advice I can give is to practice with as many materials and tools as you have available, and I promise you will find the options that fit you best. And don't you dare get upset when a drawing doesn't turn out the way you want. What's learning without making mistakes on the way, right? If you don't fall, how will you learn to get up? Quick awesome watercolor tip. If you paint on a thicker kind of paper, you can wash away the mistakes, such as accidental drips or if you went over the lines because you're a child like me and can't contain yourself. With a clean, tougher and finer brush, add some clean water on the area you want to clean and gently start rubbing. This will damage the paper a bit, so it's not a trick you should use on large areas. Once the color is softened, pat the area with a dry tissue, then repeat the process. Here's the before and after. Pretty nifty, I'd say. The most important area in this painting is the hair. From my experience, curly hair can be the toughest challenge you'll encounter, as it's so complex and tangled, it's so hard to find a structure for it. But hey, this video is about workarounds, so here's mine. After I finished filling the whole volume of the hair, I started adding loose strands around the edges to emulate the wild and frizzy look. It's important to let it dry completely after this step, because for the next one we'll be taking advantage of the best trait of watercolors, and that's transparency. But Karas, I hear you say, what's so awesome about transparency? Well, for one, you can add layers over layers of brush strokes and the colors will overlap, creating a darker patch. So using a medium brush, I add small C and S shapes, creating the illusion of strands, darkening the areas around her neck and shoulders, further the idea of shaded areas, while also bringing out her face, creating a nice contrast. From here on, you can draw as many details as you want or don't want. I like adding in some darker contours and some light accents with gouache, and then of course, after scanning, I edit it a bit digitally, doing some cleanup and adjusting the contrast. When I posted my first video on YouTube, which you should definitely watch, it's fantastic, I asked you guys to tell me what you'd like to see next, and my lovely sister, who is a fairy of flowers, requested I draw Merida from the animated movie Brave. So here you are, my schnugums, my gumdrop, my ray of sunshine, this one is for you.
as always, let me know what you think in the comments. Did you find this useful? Did you laugh or cringe at my attempted jokes? I'm doing this all for you guys as I want to add to the massive archive of tutorials and tips of, for painting the internet provides. Most of the things I know I learned on the internet from kind strangers who shared their knowledge for free and I'm doing the same. The cycle continues. Thank you all very much for being here with me, especially those of you who stayed until the end. Thank you for watching and stay creative.